Yeah, launch it, baby! Launch oh, it! Right. Launch it! Launch it! No, no, he's not got it. No, 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 no. So here we are at the start line in Nice with the vehicles in the background. This is pretty much my favorite thing. <laughs> I'm riding every day, so this is my Tour de France. <laughs> And they're yelling, Israel, Israel, Ali. And it's, uh, it's really a warm reception that the team is getting in France. One of the things that I like the most about it is the sound. sound. The sound of cycling. When you hear these bikes, there's something beautiful about it. Um, I love that sound, especially in a big pack, if you listen. It's a beautiful sound, and the speed, and the fresh air, and, and the fact that you get to um, be in beautiful geographics, beautiful geographies like this. As you can see on the streets of France, you can feel the love we're getting. I've always ridden a bike. My parents bought me a bicycle for my fifth birthday. And as I got into my adolescent years, my bike was my transportation. So much so that I only got my first car when I was 25. In my late 30s, I noticed that there were some uh, guys in my neighborhood riding really fancy bikes, racer bikes, you know? So I bought a bike, helmet, glasses, shoes, gloves, jersey, bib shorts, pump, you name it, get for the priestly sum of 2,500 Canadian dollars, sales tax included. One point, he used to have these time trials, and it was a big competition amongst the clients. And I did pretty well, I, I started to win those. And he told me at one point, you know, Sylvan, you're pretty good. Maybe you ever consider racing? And I said, uh, racing? What racing? <laughs> I really didn't know anything about the sport. I went to watch a race, and it was a local master's criterium. And I thought, this race that I'm watching, honestly, looked like a professional race to me. They were going so fast, um, I was utterly impressed. So the next week, I went out, went back, bought myself a one-day racing license, jumped in and uh, somehow survived to finish with the peloton. And that was my first race. And uh, the next year I got myself a full racing license and uh, began racing. And I can uh, proudly say that having started bike racing at age 41, I have six Canadian titles. Canadian Masters um, Championship titles and I've won the World Championships a couple of times. If I hadn't been a participant in the sport, you know, I would never have known anything about cycling. Probably would not have become a bike fan, a uh, bike racing fan because I really, you know, you have to sort of understand the sport. <laughs> Did you hear that? She said shalom. The Israel Cycling Academy team manager at the time contacted me and he said, I heard nice things about you. Probably because I was building a velodrome in Tel Aviv. 
And he says, next time you're in Israel, would you like to go for a bike ride? And he was a former Israeli champion and had made it to the pro level himself, Ran Margaliot. And when an Israeli champion wants to go on a bike ride with me, that sounded like a good idea. Israel had a cycling culture, beautiful roads, open, free, diverse, tolerant, and safe. And uh, the story continued. The idea of bringing the Giro big start to Israel, that's when I really stepped up my investment in the team to a bigger, much bigger level. And cycling is the hardest sport in the world. And I say that you see a person's true character, you really see people as they truly are. I cannot say I've ever done a business deal on the bicycle. Uh, and I've made important decisions, important uh, financial decisions, business decisions uh, on the bike. I, I feel the satisfaction that I've been out and uh, had a good run and burned the calories so I can enjoy my, the rest of my day, and my dinner, and my glass of wine. And uh, yeah, I feel pretty good about it every time I, every time a ride is done. Thank you, thank you.